for tonight, um, some of you will have seen Helen's um, Moby, my mobile laboratory, but tonight we're going to talk about the real mobile laboratory. I think everyone here is training with PowerPrex or some description. So basically, every training session you do is a, it's like a, a test, basically. A uh, quote from Joe Frill there, um, 15 years ago now, the power meters are the wave of the future and will change the way cyclists train. Um, the future is now. Yeah, so training, train, training with power measuring, um, it can reduce the need for lab testing. Like I say, every training session you do, it's in, in effect, it's a test. So one thing we can look at is sub, sub maximal fitness, um, critical power. So some of you may have, may have had this measured in the lab. Um, you do a number of um, performance trials. Um, a photo of the SIS ladies there. Uh, yeah, you can do you can do um, as much work as you can in three minutes. You do a seven minute trial and a 12 minute trial, and you say you can plot the graph like this, and you can work out your, your critical power, um, and you can get a measure of your anaerobic work capacity. Um, work you do above critical power. Um, some, something some of you might have done in the lab. But you can also, you can do it out on the road as well. Um, there's an SRM trace from someone, again, the same thing. Within, within a longer ride you can do a block of three minutes, a block of five minutes, and a block of 12 minutes. And um, So if, if you look at the powers there, um, they actually come out very similar to what you measure in the lab. So, so you, Within a real world setting, you can you can measure a similar thing like that. So is that riding flat out for three minutes? Yeah, you just the idea is to complete as much work as you can within that three minute period. So I mean, be some pacing for probably to get the highest power, but yeah, it's, it's a maximal effort. Yeah, so it's like a bit of trial and error to. Yeah, yeah, um, to, to get an idea of zero effort to to produce five minutes. Otherwise, I'll just start hiring. Yeah, but I mean, I I just I've just been using critical power for my, my dissertation with my masters and even in the lab. You still need that pacing, so yeah. I mean, there, there is it's definitely something you get better at the more yeah. you do it. So, I mean, you can recreate it on the road, as it is. Uh, you can also use your performance time. So, within that, you, obviously, you've got some 25 minutes, you've got a 10 mile, a 25 mile, and a 50 mile time trial, and something along the lines of pursuit or a, a, a much shorter effort like that. Uh, Something, something that's used in running a lot more is trying to predict um, your performance times in an event from times you've done it in maybe shorter events or longer events. So predicting a marathon time, probably 10k. You can do a similar thing with cycling. Um, so you've got more of a sort of a, a curved relationship there, but you can transform it and you can get a bit more of a straight line. You can predict it from that. Um, it's another way you can look at it. Estimation of your MMP, your maximum of power. Um, everyone's done a ram test here. That's that final minute of your um, ram test. You can also do that out on the road as well. It's not something you have to do in the lab. Um, this one is from a lab test. So again, we've got the highest power here at the end. It comes out at 329 watts, that one. Um, that's just a standard ram test. Um, and then here's one that's been done on the road. But again. The idea of this, if you, you find, a, find a hill, basically, uh, it's going to take you probably up to about five minutes to climb it, and you go flat out, and that, that final minute um, is going to be very close to your MMP, as you can see with this one. It's a 333, very close to what was been mentioned in the lab. So that's another way of working that out. Um, if, it, if this is something you wanted to try, I mean, useful tips is find a hill where you actually reach the top of the hill. I mean, it's it's very hard to, to, to stop halfway up the hill and do it, so it's almost having that summit as a target helps you to get a maximum effort out. Uh, so, again, it's, it's doing a lab test but on the road basically. Um, so, and from that, you can, you can do a slightly more a formal test. Um, I'm sure this is something most of you, or if not all of you, will have done at some point. Um, the dreaded power profile in week. Um, so, one of those things, uh, there are certain athletes I've heard from this week that actually put, put this off because they know it's going to mean their training zone's going up. So, uh, yeah, you've got the two, the two hour block where you work on a couple of five minute efforts, you've got two minute efforts, one minute efforts, 30 seconds and 12 seconds, and then your FTP test later on in the week where you do a 20 minute block after a five minute burst. Uh, 
and so and there's there's an example where so we've got we've got peak five minute power here, peak minute, peak two minute, peak one minute, thirty seconds, and twelve seconds. So we we we're getting a a really good spread of your um, of your performance over a range of, of durations. Um, and again it's 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 just something that we can look at and update your training zone, so look at your strengths and weaknesses without having to get you in the lab. Um, like I say, looking at your strengths and weaknesses and using that to, to help design your training program. So comparing your strengths and weaknesses, what we've got from your power profile, and we can compare that to your chosen event demands and we can sort of see, see where you're weak in, in relation to where you need to be and design your training program around that. So it's just what's relevant. So if, if, if you have got a weak slightly weaker sprint if your peak power output isn't very good but you're looking at time trialing then it's not necessarily quite so important to us in terms of your training program whereas the 20 minute test is, is, is what we're going to be looking at more in, in that respect and evaluate the effect, effectiveness of that training program so getting you to perform this uh, power pro, profiling block um, throughout the year we can see whether the training you're doing is actually working and improving the power over the durations that you're interested in for your event um, and again, with those strengths and weaknesses, we can maybe point you in the direction of events that you might you might be wise to specialise in. So again, if you've got if you've got that very high uh, 20 minute power compared to the rest of them, I mean that's, that's going to be well suited to time trial. And if you've got that high 12 12 second, you might be looking at criteria and some very and things like that. Um, but it's it's a comparison for that rider against himself. It's it's not it's not necessarily that much of an advantage to go comparing it um, across across different riders. Um, anyone who's familiar with um, Andy Coggins' book, Training Based on the Power Meter, you, you might have seen the tables in there where they, they rank you based on uh, world class or cat one as a rider. And I think, yeah, it can, can be a bit misguided. I think there's a, there's a lot of athletes who are performing above the level that their power levels should suggest and all vice versa as well. So. As a tool for comparing between the same rider, it's useful, but maybe not amongst uh, different riders. Um, so one of the ways this is displayed, I mean, this is a chart we can get off WKO, um, it's the mean maximum power curve. Uh, it's basically just a plot of the highest powers you've recorded for certain durations. So the short durations, two or four seconds here, up around the 1,000 watt mark. We look at how it drops off for the long durations, up around 20 minutes, around 300 watts here. So it's just a, it's a profile of the rider basically. Um, and looking at the shape of that can help again with determining the strengths and weaknesses. Um, I don't know if, if you can see that very clearly. Um, so it's a, a, few, a few different plots there, different riders. Um, so you see, some, you see some with a, almost a big shoulder here, um, and then a sharp drop off. And then other riders, it's a bit more of a flatter profile, so we can look at that again for strengths and weaknesses. And it's a similar thing again, it's looking at looking at those durations that we get you to do in the power profile in a week. So you've got a five second block, a one minute block, a five minute block, and your functional threshold will be 60 minute power. Um, this is actually it's Helen's data from, from her looking back over her seasons. The, these individual blocks are a whole year's data, so they're, they're, her, they're her best power to weight ratios these durations from that year and it's just it's just worth looking at the way it changes um, depending on what she's been specialising in, what she's been focusing on. Um, then a five minute block, this, this peak here is where she was focusing on her track training so that's something she was looking to develop um, and the same year as her functional threshold so her output has actually dropped while she's been focusing on that discipline. Um, as this, this block here, yeah, it's power to weight ratio so this is where and um, she was at, at her lightest weight when she was racing, so the power to weight ratio here is the highest. So it's just interesting the way it does change over a num number of seasons depending on the training you're focusing on, what, what events you're specialising in. Those charts lift, lifted out of Andy, Andy Collins' book, things like that. Um, you can begin to look at your power to weight ratio over these durations, and you can begin to get an idea of what type of rider someone is. Uh, those charts lift, lifted out of Andy, Andy Collins' book, things like that. Um, you can begin to look at your power to weight ratio over these durations and you can begin to get an idea of what type of rider someone is. Um, so 
we've got an all rounder here. Um, if, you, if you put your best your best power to weight ratios on this chart, you can see that's a fairly horizontal spread there. So there's none that are um, considerably higher than the rest. And that's that's generally a sign of an all, all rounder, um, somebody who's equal strength. What does the chart show? Um, yeah, it's the same as the previous one. We've got five seconds, one minute, five minute, and functional threshold, and it's just the power to weight ratios again. So it's it's, um, it's kind of the same as that chart that displayed um, should be the best there. You might want to read out some of the values that are in red there just to give people yeah, a bit of a, an idea. If you, if you can read <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, I think we've got a 15.07 watts per kilo for five seconds, 7.6 for a minute, 4.7 for five minutes, and 4.1 ish for the function for the so it's a fairly horizontal plot for that one. Um, and you can compare that to what you might call a pursuiter. Um, it's inverted V shape, so the one minute and the five minute powers, they're much higher in comparison to these two. Um, again, from the things we might measure in, in the lab, this might, this might sort of link well to someone having a very high VO2 max, max minute power, and perhaps they're the neuromuscular power, their sprint's not quite so not not quite as so strong, and their functional threshold isn't isn't so high either. Uh, and there's a potential rounder who's yet to focus on sustaining that high percentage of VO2 max. So I think there's a there's an abundance of um, pro riders who've come from that track background and who've developed this high minute power and five minute power, and then gone on to specialise on the road, and they've actually lifted this higher up as well and become more and more rounder. Um, Time trialists, I'm sure there's plenty plenty in this room who've got a similar plot to this. Um, it's upsloping, so their strength is their sustainable power, their function threshold, their 20 minute, 60 minute powers, um, whereas their, their neuromuscular power, uh, their anaerobic, their anaerobic capacities, they're perhaps not so well developed, not so much of a strength. And a sprinter, again, so it's generally downsloping. Got the very high peak powers, but then perhaps not so well developed in these areas. And again, once again, the, 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 these are these are the best efforts that they've performed up to now. Um, as Helen spoke spoke about yesterday, um, these sort of areas, the, lat the high lactate threshold, lifting the endurance, um, is something that can be trained. So. Sprinter could turn themselves into a more, more of an all-rounder, but they're probably always going to have that high peak powers and strength.